So is it possible that antifreeze can do a better job of cleaning carbon deposits than say sea foam, Marvel Mystery Oil, or AMS Oil Parafoam? In the past we tested those products and they did a great job. However, I've had quite a few of you reach out to me and say, hey, you've got to try antifreeze. As mechanics, you've taken the cylinder head off of an engine that's had a head gasket leak, and that engine, you know exactly which cylinder has been exposed to antifreeze because that cylinder is spotless. Anyway, I'm not sure if this will work or not, but what I do know is we've got a couple of tests that we'll be doing today to find out once and for all whether or not antifreeze can do a good job. The first test involves using a spray mist. We're going to use about four to six ounces and just spray a mist inside of the engine as it's running after it's fully warmed up. The second test involves using a drip of the antifreeze water mix. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and spray this into the carburetor of a running engine that has a see-through cylinder head and see what it looks like as it's going through the engine. So let's go and get this project underway. Okay, I ran into a bit of a problem. This head bolt will not tighten because it's stripped out. So there are a couple of little tricks that you can consider using when something like this happens. I would not do this on an application where reliability is a big deal, but this is just a small engine so it doesn't matter. One thing you can do is apply a little bit of JB Weld or some sort of epoxy on half the threads. And the reason for this is gonna create a space and it's gonna force the other half of the threads to make better contact. It's just gonna tighten everything down. That's one option. If that doesn't work, another option is to use some copper wire and what you can do is just pick up some wire strip off the insulator so what you can do is take several pieces of this copper and just sort of experiment with it slide these into the area that's stripped out and see if it'll tighten to get it to start easy i tend to wrap the, fr the first part of it and then this the uh, trailing edge i tend to leave it split spread apart much better So in previous videos, I've used a, a small tachometer that I purchased off of Amazon, and it's pretty good. It does a fairly good job, but I'm not as impressed with it as I would like to be. I just don't know how accurate it is. So I'm also going to be using a digital tachometer I recently picked up. Several of you have recommended this. So the way this digital tachometer works, it measures the spinning motion of an object, but it needs something that has a different color spectrum or different color schemes so it comes with reflective tape so I've added a piece of reflective tape to this piece of metal which is going to spin at the same rate as the engine. So this is a safety data sheet for the antifreeze. It's 50% water mix and the rest of the ingredients include ethylene glycol and to a lesser extent other ingredients. If you ever have questions about the contents of what you see on a safety data sheet just look up the cast numbers. These can be found online. There's several resources and you can find a lot more information about the contents. So I'm going to add about eight ounces into the spray bottle. I don't plan to use all of it, but I don't want to be trying to spray the last couple of ounces. So during today's testing, I've shown it in previous videos and I don't want to be too redundant, but I'll be using the engine brake. The reason for this is we really want to get this engine up to around 350 degrees Fahrenheit in order for the engine to have adequate temperature to sort of blast the carbon off. So every engine is going to experience a little bit of blow-by. Can we see visible contamination in this oil? Now, there may be some contamination that we can't see, 
So if you decide to do something like this, which I do not recommend, always change the oil. Okay, this oil does not look too milky, so I don't see a big problem with it, but if this was an engine that I plan to keep for a long time, I would definitely change the oil. So did the spray mist actually help? I think it did. There's quite a bit of cleaning through the center part of the piston as well as around the intake valve. There's a lot of cleaning. So I think if this was exposed to the, a consistent head gasket leak, this over time would all be clean. Of course, the oil would be very contaminated from the blow-by. So my take is that it looks like most of the cleaning occurred around the intake and exhaust valves right around the spark plug area. It looks to me like there's actually more buildup on the cylinder head itself. So a lot of the stuff that was on the piston just transferred over to the cylinder head. I'm very curious to see if a drip will work better than a spray mist. And the reason that a drip might actually be better is that liquid bouncing off the piston and hitting the cylinder head may actually knock some of this carbon free. Right now I have the hose clamped pretty tightly so the antifreeze will not flow through this hose. But once I start to open up the clamp, it's gonna allow the antifreeze to flow. And I can adjust the flow rate quite easily. Now this hose leads right into the opening of the carburetor, the mouth of the carburetor. But uh, as it drips out, it'll be drawn into the engine. And we'll do this once the engine's fully warmed up. And we'll run it for, say, about 20 minutes and try to use about four ounces of antifreeze to see if it does a better job. I'm gonna check the oil to see if there's any visible contamination. I don't see any visible contamination. In other words, it's not a milky white color. If, there, if it was, then it'd be very clear that we had some antifreeze and water getting into the oil. However, like I said before, just because the oil looks clean doesn't mean that there isn't some contamination. Well, I'm really surprised at how well that worked. I did not expect the drip to work so much better than the spray mist. However, I think the spray mist really helped soak into the carbon, loosen it up, and therefore when the drip was used, it really took care of the carbon buildup. Anyway, please do not try this on your automobile engine or anything with a catalytic converter or sensors because antifreeze is definitely not meant to be used as a carbon cleaner. However, a lot of mechanics wrote in and said, hey, can you please try this? So for everyone that recommended this, thank you very much. I read your recommendations and I do videos on them. So please keep those recommendations coming. Are there other non-traditional products that you've used to clean the carbon buildup inside of an engine? Please let me know. I'd like to read your comments on that. 
As usual, thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. Please take care, and I look forward to seeing you next time.